Kia ora tato. Um, this, this talk's about possum encounter and interaction rates, and I just want to acknowledge my co-author, Sam Brown, and if you go to NETS this year, um, Sam will be, pre be presenting this same talk. Um, this work is funded by the Ministry of Science and Innovation, and it's, it's really about um, how can we make our trapping and our detection of possums, if we're detecting them with chew cards or wax tags, how can we make that more effective? How can we make sure that every encounter that a possum might make with those devices, um, you know, how can we make those result in a detection or a capture? So the question is, how many of those encounters are possums actually escaping from that we're just not detecting them or not capturing them? So I have a very sort of brief outline here, so we'll just run through some um, background and a wee bit of theory, just to put it in context. Um, then run through our current research trials that are ongoing and, and then go through some preliminary results and finish off with some conclusions. So some background theory, if you look at a, 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 an animal's home range and we de depict that as a, a, a three-dimensional kernel as you can see on the left of the slide here, um, a home range may be typically sort of unimodal or cone shaped like that shown. If we look down on that three dimensional cone um, and depict it in two dimensions, which you can see in the, the circles in the, in the top of the slide there, and then if we put a, a trap in the centre of that home range, if you can see that Victor trap there, um, the probability of catching or detecting an animal at the centre of that home range is on one night um, equals g naught, so it's usually de de depicted in, in equations as, as g naught. So that's the probability of catching an animal at its centre of its home range on one night. And that probability declines the further you go away from that home range centre. And that's shown, or the rate of that decline is shown in the graph in the, in the bottom right hand side of the, the graph. Now for possums, um, or, or for any species really, that capture probability or detection probability can be partitioned into encounter and interaction rates. So we can tease it apart a wee bit. And as shown by the equation there, so your probability of capture or detection equals the probability of that animal encountering the device times the probability that it interacted with the device given it encountered. So that's... Um, what this um, talk is about, but it's specifically focused on that last section, given an encounter, what was the interaction probability. Now there's only been one field study that's tried to measure this um, directly, and that was um, published um, by Steve Ball in, in 2005, and the probability encounter of encounter that he um, derived or determined from this is for possums um, in Beach Forest and Mount Summers in Canterbury, was 0.12. And then the probability of an interaction given that encounter was 0.44. So just under half of the possums were captured that, that encountered a trap. So the G naught, when you multiply those two things together, was 0.05. So that means if a trap is set at the centre of the possum's home range, there is only a 5% chance of catching it on any one night. So we were interested in looking, or further looking, at that um, s second um, proportion there, the probability of interaction given an encounter, which um, Steve publishes 0.44. So what we did in, in one of our trial areas, we um, had 16 possums that we put active RFID tags on, so these were just on a collar, so they're like a pit tag but they do have a, a power source um, and they can be detected at, at quite long ranges. And 10 of these possums also had uh, GPS collars um, and that's so we can work out their home ranges and work out these um, G0 values, um, which we haven't done as yet. Now each trap site, and there was 11 of these, had a, an RFID sensor and they also had a motion sensing camera set up to, to monitor the, the trap site and that's essentially a, a trail camera. And then each trap was fixed open, um, so it was set but, but locked open so it couldn't capture the animal. But the trigger was linked to another RFID tag um, and an LED to record when a possum triggered the trap. So we knew if the possum stood on the trap and it would have been um, captured. 
So just to um, show a figure of this, um, so we have that tree on the right with a yellow box there and that's the, the RFID sensor and that can detect an animal if it comes within three metres of the trap and we've defined, and it's somewhat arbitrary, but we define three metres as an encounter. So if an animal comes within that three metre, it gets recorded um, as, as, as being there and then we accept that as an encounter with that trap. The, R, um, the RFID sensor also um, detects an animal if it comes within 12 metres and so we call that a detection so we know that animal's at least within the vicinity of the trap and it just gives some idea of, of um, the probability that given it was at that distance what's the probability of it actually coming into three metres and having an encounter and then if it stood on the trap we would know whether it had an interaction with that trap. Now I have an animation here um, that I'll just run that might make that a wee bit clearer. So it shows the trap, the bait and the detection device, the 3 metre perimeter which we've defined as the encounter and then the 12 metre perimeter. And possums can do sort of one of three things. <coughs> so firstly it could come and get detected, have an encounter and then walk out of the, the area so we, we don't capture it could come in, could feed on the bait and then walk away. So again we had an encounter but we didn't have an interaction. And lastly is what we hope for, it comes in, has a, an encounter and then has an interaction with the trap. So that's what the, the electronic systems were, were recording. So this just shows, these two photos just show the reality. On the left is the trail camera pointing at a trap site and on the right hand photo is the uh, trap set with the flower um, ice and sugar lure as we normally do with trapping and the RFID sensor um, up the tree. The trap treatments that we've looked at so far, um, there's three of them. The, the first one on the left is just the standard NPCA protocol. So you have your white flower on the, on the tree, the trap in front of that um, at a hand, hand width spacing out from the tree. The second one, similar set, but the, the trap is hazed or fenced on the, on the sides of the trap to try and guide the animal over the trap, so to try and increase that probability that the possum is going to stand on the trap. And the third treatment, again the same lure, but the trap in, in this time was covered over. Um, and in this depiction here you can't actually see the trap, but it's assumed that it's under some leaf litter or soil. So what's the probability, so this is just some of the preliminary results, what's the probability of an encounter given we detected these animals at 12 metres, which is not a long way away from a trap site. So for all of them they were around about 60.6 um, or 60% and you wouldn't expect a difference here because none of them are doing anything significantly different from each other in terms of being visually um, um, available or whatever, so none of them are flashing or producing a sound that you might expect this encounter rate to be different given a detection um, at that greater distance. But if we look at the probability of a capture given those encounters, for the standard MPCA set um, the probability was 0.21, so only 20% of the encounters were resulting in a capture. Through to um, the covered sets, which was 0.4 or 40% of the encounters resulted in a capture. So we basically doubled the rate that you were catching animals given those encounters with, with the trap site um, by covering the trap. And by hazing or fencing also increased it to, to 0.34 or 34%. Now this, this slide just shows a different way of looking at encounter rates. So, so these results um, are showing the probability of capture or an interaction given an encounter, but it's using all the encounters that, the, that an animal might have had with a trap. So, an, so a, a, a possum might come to your trap site one, two, three or four times a night and then finally get caught. So this is the number of captures or the interactions that you get given 
those multiple encounters. Now, if you're a, a contractor or, or a tracker and you're coming along the next morning, you just know you've got a capture, and it could have just been from one encounter. You don't know how many encounters um, those, those possums had. So if we look at the, the number of captures or interactions you had just with one or more encounters, just assuming there was one encounter, those probabilities increase. So looking at, at, at these three probabilities now, for the MPCA protocol, um, the probability was 33 or 0.33, so it's saying 33% of those encounters are resulting in a, in a capture, um, which is better than 0.21, of course, um, up to 0.48 again um, for the covered traps. So the, the hazing and the um, covered traps did improve um, the capture rate even, even with this different way of, of analysing the results. So just a, a couple of other sort of interesting bits of information that's come out of, of this work so far. Um, so this just shows the number of nights to the first encounter and you can ignore the, the standard haze and covered treatments really. It just shows that um, most animals um, are encountering your traps on the either on the night they're set or the, the first night following that. But some of them are taking up to, and there was one animal here that took seven nights to encounter a trap. And that's probably just um, reflecting um, the position of those traps within a home range of an animal. So if, the, um, if, if one or other of those traps is not near the centre of the home range of the animals, you can expect um, those animals to take longer to find those devices. Um, so that's not unexpected, but it does show that it can take quite a, a few nights for animals to, to come onto your traps. And the other one, which is sort of equally interesting, or I find it interesting, is that it, this is the number of nights between the first encounter and the first capture. So here, you, and again, you can see a lot of them occurred on the first, the, either the night it was set, so their first, the first encounter resulted in a capture, or the, the second encounter um, resulted in a capture. But again, some individuals, and there was one at four and one at six, um, so that's six nights after their encounter. So they were encountered, they, or they encountered the trap site, but it wasn't for another six nights that they came back and got captured. Um, so they might have encountered the trap in between, but they still didn't get captured. So it's telling us something that we're not that efficient or effective at trapping and, and hopefully we can make the whole process of trapping more effective um, with this, this line of research. And we know already that just changing the way we set those traps does increase um, those probabilities. I'd like to say significantly, but you know we haven't um, done the statistics on that yet and, and we need to uh, collect more data. Um, but th the indications are that by changing the way um, we do set those traps can increase those uh, capture probabilities or interaction probabilities. So just to finish off with some conclusions, many possum visits to traps don't result in a capture. So animals can come to a site, feed on your lure, and then they just bugger off essentially and you don't catch them. The nights between the first encounter and the first capture varies from 0 to 6. Um, so not all animals are either coming back frequently after their first encounter or they're coming back but not being captured. Hazing and covering traps increase that probability of interaction given an encounter and maybe there's other things that we can do um, that I'm even more smarter to increase those probabilities. So if any of you think you know of a smart way of setting traps, then you know, please get in touch and let us know your thoughts. And my last um, page of conclusions, um, the statistics are still to be done and we haven't generated G0 from our GPS data, so hopefully that will be done in the next month or two. Future trials um, to look at density effects. So we really want to look at how those encounter and interaction rates change with density. So if you have, and I, and I probably didn't say, the, these results so far are from an area where um, possums are at, a, at a, a reasonable sort of untrapped density. We now want to take it to an area that's had 
um, sustain control and look at what those probabilities are like for a low density population that may have different behaviours when they're asso associating with traps or detection devices. And just to let you know that <coughs> Helen Nathan um, at Auckland University is doing a PhD and she's doing similar trials with ship rats and looking at encounter and interaction rates with tracking tunnels, trap tunnels and bait stations. So just to finish off with some acknowledgements, like we would like to thank Jagath Ekinaki, who's our um, sort of technological guru at Landcare Research that's helped us with the, the sort of technology and the RFID um, technology. Steve Huff for technical assistance and field assistance. Arari Gorge Station for access permission and Mo Fresh for the animation. So thank you very much. And again, if you want um, or if you have any questions, please um, get in touch with either me or Sam. Um, just send us an email and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.